<laughs> so once again, please stay seated. Thank you. During the attack, in between the bridge and the shoreline, there were a lot of ships that day, in addition to the others out here. But anyway, right now we're heading out there to battleship the target of the attack on December 7, 1941. And because we're not able to get off this a little bit of what you're missing, you know, number one, if you were able to get there, the first thing you'll do is when you get into the monument, you know the direction of the Arizona below you. And of course, knowing that there's about a thousand bodies in the ship, once a pack. Of course, you see that white key out here, that's where she was, and of course she came in to about a half a mile from my home, burning and smoking. And let me tell you, as she went, followed by quite an aircraft straight through the ship, and the ship don't sink. And I tell you, within a half a mile, there was quite a bit of ending. So until they get that fixed, that's when you can get in. But anyway, the real part of that is where the shrine room is. And of course, in the middle of the flagpole and below that, you see gun turret number two, or number three. You see a white buoy back there, closest to us, and that is the stern of the ship. And in between that two, you have, for those people that want to be buried 43 at 43 different times, the divers would take the ashes, swim about another 100 feet, dive another 25 or 30 feet, and then as we go by, I just want you to take a look at you know what I see. I see those little small boats going around and around. What I thought was picking up debris, but what they were pretty full sight to see and something that I don't forget. But anyway, coming back to the monument, in the middle is what you call the assembly area. Among other things, you see oil still oozing out of the ship at the rate of two to nine quarts a day. On a still day, you don't already know I, you know, Elvis Presley donated almost $60,000 to build a monument. But anyway, these white structures you see in the water is what we call keys. And that's where the ships were tied up, you know, during that time. Unlike it's an island within the harbor. Again, no all the battleships that were here. Now we're approaching, you can see the battleship Missouri. The Missouri, that's what it was. But take a good look at the battleship because you know what it looks like, that's what the battleship looks like. And I'll tell you something, everything you see is what I did not see. Everything you do not see is what I saw. Because that was the Oklahoma, I saw that battleship. It lay like that for about a year and a half before they finally was able to take out all the bodies that were still in there. But anyway, the Oklahoma and Arizona was about 600 feet long, but burning and smoking and blowing up in the sky. Oh, that was exciting, beautiful sight. You know what? And you know, about 10, 12 years ago, before my sister passed away, she fired an explosion. The roof of the plane, all the way at three top, I could see the bottom of the plane, I could see the pilot. And when I looked up in the sky, there was plane all over, right, left, front, behind, overhead, everywhere. And of course, when I looked out here, boy, the fire, the explosion, the dive bombers, the Oh, whatever. Oh, I tell you, it was one of the most exciting scenes for a little young kid. You know what I did? I ran out to the railroad track, sat on the railroad track and watched the show. Oh, it was one fantastic, exciting thing for a little young kid that didn't know better. Not by the Japanese. The Japanese did not bomb the city at all. They may leave, and I tell you, I was going nuts, crying, scared, fear. In less than an hour, it was over. The attack was over. We came back home for more supplies and everything. There was no more plane. Fireboats tried to pull out the plane. 
And when we came back home, there were soldiers all over the place. And we came with the martial law, building bomb shelters, working the pineapple fields, and, and the worst part was learning how to behave and staying away from, staying away from trouble, you know, with the military and the martial law. For myself, people asked when I served during World War II, and the answer is, again, thank you, and I hope that someday you have the privilege and opportunity to come back and maybe get on the monument to see what it feels like. But anyway, again, thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you.